Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the Goal of the Wise. I'm your host Ardin Al Al Mahdi. I'm Hassan Al Mahdi. I'm Jamil Al Al Mahdi. And once again, guys, we're back here talking about the door number seven of the Goal of the Wise. If you want to follow along with us, uh, look at the screen and hopefully you are able to download. Um, uh, sorry, scan the QR code so this way you'll be able to download the Goal of the Wise yourself. It's an amazing book which um, has um, a great amount of knowledge, uh, 600 plus pages. Uh, it's available in English and Arabic and in French and Spanish and many other languages and many more uh, that will be coming soon, inshallah. So, without further ado, let us begin now with uh, our reading with the Goal of the Wise. Right now, we are uh, at door number seven, and right now we are actually talking about the uh, a very interesting concept, which is the calendar. You know, uh, f- throughout humanity, and you know, th- um, throughout time, mankind has been using calendars to record time, exactly, and uh, re- and record the season and events, and annually remember certain pieces of events and historical uh, accounts that had taken place. Mm-hmm. So on our day-to-day life, we use a calendar, we use it for work, we use it to, uh, for holidays, we use it for vacations, we use it for uh, many of these things, including religious holidays or religious events. For example, you know, the Christians, they will celebrate the uh, birthday of Jesus Christ. For them, it's always on December 25th. Uh, they'll celebrate Easter. Uh, the Muslims, they'll celebrate the month of Ramadan. They'll celebrate Eid. And... Uh, You'll find many religions always carrying with themselves a calendar which has within it their holy days, their holy months, their holy weeks, their holy Fridays, Saturdays, or Sundays, and so on and so forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and let's put up the verse that talks about this, and this is uh, the uh, Surah Yunus verse number 5. It says, It is He who made the sun... A shining light, and um, and the moon a derived light, and determined for it phases, that you may know the number of years and account of time. Allah has not created this except in truth. He details the signs for a people who knows. So we see here in the Quran that it is very obvious that Allah created time. Allah was the one who made the sun and the moon, both of them, as a way that we keep records. And now, actually, let's go to even Surah al tawbah mm-hmm. the next verse that we want to also pop up on the screen, where it says, Indeed, the number of months ordained by Allah is 12 in Allah's record, since the day He created the heaven and the earth, of which four are sacred, that is the right way. So do not wrong one another during these months and fight the polytheists together as they fight uh, together against you. And know that Allah is with those who uh, uh, with those mindful of him. So okay, we see here that time, even in the Quran, months in the Quran, uh, the sun and the moon and the heavenly bodies in terms of calculation of the years is of great importance in Islam. And it is of great importance today and with all religions. Exactly. And so these are verses that were, you know, taught to Prophet Muhammad by Angel Gabriel, right, to mm-hmm. come and talk to a people uh, at that time. So if we just, you know, dive deeper a little bit into this this last uh, verse that we just brought up, because um, Prophet Muhammad came, as we mentioned yesterday, to uh, sort of idol worship in polytheist nation, right? right. Yes. Um, that were that until then didn't have sort of much of guidance until Prophet Muhammad came to correct them. So as we know, the lunar cycle um, consists of twenty. 29, 29 and a half days and back then the before Islam they had a lunar a luni solar calendar um, and this meant that basically they had uh, a, uh, for two or three years they'd have a lunar cycle and then they'd have to add in a, an additional month a 13th exactly. month um, to make sure that you know their festivals their important dates and time periods and events in a year don't get jumbled up um, because as you know uh, a lunar cycle means that 11, every year 11 days goes back so what was at one stage is 11 days before in the next year and so on and so forth and so like you'll find that something that was in summer is actually happening in winter uh, over a, over a course of a few years um, and that's why it's a disaster actually uh, for the for the Muslims today because we have important events um, that 
you know, like Eid, as you mentioned, Ramadan, as you mentioned, Layla al Qadr, you know, if you're a Shia, you have Muharram, you have Hajj, you have the pilgrimages in the summer and the winter. And um, can you imagine sort of back then how you would, you know, keep track of such a system where you have uh, tw- uh, 29 days in a month and you have an 11th, a month of 11 days that, you know, is added every two to three years without the use of, like, smartphones, you know, telescopes, all these different technologies that we have now. Um, it was a disaster. It was throwing everything into sort of uh, chaos. Yeah. Um, and he added in this month called the Kabisa month, which is this 11th month, uh, the 13th month, 11th, 11 day, 13th month. And then shortly after, when Prophet Muhammad came, he was given this first to basically clarify to the people that actually there's just 12 months in a year, uh, therefore indicating that it was a 12-month calendar, a 12-month year, not a 13th month sometimes. Yeah, so the idea is this, is that sol- what's the difference between a solar and a lunar calendar, yeah. right? The difference is that uh, the solar calendar is, is based on uh, how many days it takes the Earth to rotate around the sun. Mm-hmm. And that takes that's an entire year. It takes 300 and... Uh, 300 and, and you know like yeah, 365 days, days yeah. but then it's a little bit more than that actually if you calculate it correctly so but then the cal- the the give and take uh, is fixed with the days and the differences in the months yes mm-hmm. so it's like it it solves that uh, little tiny bit of extra yeah. time it takes to for the earth to rotate av- around the sun but then you have a, a lunar calendar, which is a, a lunar-based calendar, is uh, based on the, the rotation of the moon around the Earth. Mm-hmm. So then what happens is that uh, you have, uh, that's different. You know, that what happens is that by the end of the year, when the sun, go, when the Earth rotates around the sun, you end up with 354 days. Yeah. You know, so you cannot end up, you're, you'll end up basically, imagine if the Earth has not yet f- fully completed the cycle around the, Earth, the sun. Yeah. So right then, 354 that's when the uh, 12 months would end for the lunar calendar so you'd need you'd, you'd be missing out on 11 days mm-hmm. what do you do with that 11 days that's the solution that they offered before in the jahiliya time mm-hmm. which is uh, they would calc- they would collect those 11 days they would save it in mm-hmm. this year and they would save it in the next year mm-hmm. you know and then they that they would have uh, 22 days yeah, yeah. then they that's would save it for the, the third year yeah. they would take a little bit of that and they would make another month which yeah, is yeah. 13 months so that they can complete the cycle yeah. so they can actually uh, keep track of the seasons mm-hmm. otherwise they wouldn't know when to when when to sow their uh, seeds, when to uh, go to pilgrimage and when to do their trades. They would not know when winter is coming. So the idea is that uh, in order for them to calculate, they had to to add that 13 months that you were saying. They call that year is this uh, Kabisa year. So the the idea is that in that year is the year where they collected all the days that are missing and they added in that year that month. Uh, Then what happens then, it's it's like uh, uh, this doesn't make sense to uh, a lot of calculations. So, for example, if you want to keep track of, of, uh, of if you just want to take the lunar calendar by itself, yeah. it's not possible to keep track of seasons. Mm-hmm. That's why you have to have a mixture of the two. You know, that way you can actually fix it. But we run into a problem. When Muhammad sallallahu came, he said that the calculations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the year is 12 months. Mm-hmm. Mm. So that actually now uh, restricted the the Arabs at that time uh, to use the solar calendar instead of the lunar calendar because the lunar calendar, as we said, it's missing a month every three years around. Yeah. You know. So then what do you do? It's like you have a 13 months uh, instead of 12. Mm-hmm. So it's a missing, it's a, it's a very big problem. Therefore, you'll find, for example, uh, that uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu made the sol- solar calendar the main calendar. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's how you calculate the year. Then, sorry. Uh, so then, what happened is this: is that when you do these calculations, it's a problem. Is it becomes with okay? When is Ramadan? See, the difference between the two calendars is that if you take this lunar calendar, Ramadan, or any month, in fact. Any month, any season, you'll find that season continue to rotate around, continue mm. to move a, a month ahead. Every mm-hmm. every year it moves. So today is winter. The winter then the next year is going to be in the next month, mm. and yeah, the, so next, the next the next month. Yeah, so then it becomes a problem in society if we were to stick with a lunar calendar based system mm. because suddenly now you cannot keep track of the times, especially back in those days, they didn't have the internet to know the weather forecast or when you know spring starts or any of that stuff. But yeah, now the Muslim world, you know, actually the Muslim world, they believe that the lunar calendar is the way to go. And 
you know, uh, now we have to ask ourselves, uh, you know, if the lunar calendar is a fallacy or if the, if the lunar calendar is a problem abs uh, absent of a solar calendar, then who is the one who, who created that? Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, if we can bring up the next slide, I think it's pretty clear um, that this is a definite innovation and something that, you know, Prophet Muhammad, uh, Imam Ali and the Imams after them didn't come with. It's not something that is, you know, brought to the table by someone that's appointed by uh, God. Um, oh, yeah. This is where sort of the misguidance always comes from. So uh, I have a slide here, just a screenshot as it were, from uh, Encyclop Encyclopedia Britannica, so, you know, well referenced, everyone knows Encyclopedia Britannica, and um, it's talking about the Islamic calendar. So it's not something that we're making up, it's right. something that, you know, scholars and learned people know about. Yep. And it says uh, a little bit down the page, and I'll just read the highlighted part there. It says, Umar the second caliph in the year uh, 639 CE introduced the Hijra era, now distinguished by the initials AH, uh, in, which means in the year of the Hijra. Umar started the first year with the first day of the lunar month of Muharram, which obviously they've done the calculations for back then, uh, corresponds with July the 16th, um, 622, 622 in the Julian calendar mm. So, so yeah. yeah, so the, we see here that the one who introduced the lunar calendar was not actually Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mm -hmm. and his family, but we see that, you know, not only just the, the uh, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, but actually many, many sources talk about, and including Islamic sources, mm -hmm. mention that the first one to uh, bring about the use of the lunar calendar and the date in which to start it, which was at the time that the Prophet uh, did his uh, migration, you know, Omar said, hey, let's do it mm -hmm. from that time. Uh, yeah, was Omar al Khattab. And it's not something new and it's not something shocking, at least for us, uh, only because we're very much familiar of Omar al Khattab and his quote unquote good innovations. Yeah. I yeah. remember even as a Sunni, my God, as a Sunni, uh, you are brought up to believe that Omar was a great man, right? Mm -hmm. Who after the Prophet's death did the whole Muslim Ummah a favor by bringing in uh, Bidar Hasanat. Uh, on many occasions. Yeah. One occasion, for example, was I think he was asleep or uh, he was uh, at the point of like waking up and someone is calling the uh, the Adhan, right? Everyone knows the Adhan. Yeah, Every Muslim Fajr, knows yeah. the Adhan. But the Adhan for Fajr, he added within it what? Yeah. What did he say? Yeah, he said, As-salatu khayrun min al yeah. Prayer so, is better than sleep. Yeah, so somebody said that because they wanted to make sure that Umar ibn Khattab yeah. like, is going to wake up. So they said, the prayer is better than sleep. Yeah. And then when he heard that, he's like, that's nice. That's a nice idea. Hey, actually, let's add that I into like the it. event. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like, but like, for some reason, when we, you know, the Ahmadi yeah. religion of peace and light, when we add in, okay, first we say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an Muhammadan abduhu rasulullah, Ashadu an aliyan, alayman wal min, amin wildihi hujajullah, Ashadu an al mahdi wal mahdiyan hujajullah. When we add these two extra bearing witness of the Imams and the Mahdi's, the whole Muslim Ummah flips. <laughs> Mm. Bid ah. Bad yeah. bid ah. But for some reason, when Umar al Khattab mentions that prayer is better than sleep in the Adhan that the Prophet of Allah already had approved of and did not add or subtract anything from it, the Muslim world stays silent and they say, hey, actually, that's a nice idea. It's a yes. good idea. Why not? It mm -hmm. seems like the Umar ibn Khattab uh, Islam was not completed. Mm -hmm. uh, the Prophet ﷺ did not complete uh, you didn't know, finish his uh, mission. Finish he didn't his finish mission. It. And therefore, Umar ibn Khattab has to come and you know correct yeah. the mistakes of the Prophet and the shortcomings. You know uh, How disastrous such a belief system is. Mm -hmm. Even if you want to sugarcoat it with as much beauty and as much like glamour and glitter and put on it sugar and put on it to whatever, whatever you would like to add on it, that you can make it tasty, it just doesn't make any sense because the Prophet Sallallahu if he knew uh, that that was a good thing, I mean, where did the Prophet take this Adhan from? Mm -hmm. He took it from Jibreel mm -hmm. alayhi salatu So it's not like an innovation that he innovated. So, and we know that every, the Prophet said it very clearly, he says, every innovation is a misguidance and every misguidance is to hellfire, leads yeah. to hellfire. And so, uh, you can you can name it bid'ah hasan. You can name it a good innovation, but that doesn't dictate. That doesn't remove it from the generalization that the prophet made when he says every innovation is a is dalala, is, is misguidance, and every 
misguidance leads to hellfire. Mm -hmm. So who is Umar ibn al-Khattab to actually add to the uh, adhan or to actually change the, the calendar, the entirety of how we keep records of the entire year and how we keep our seasons in check? The, do you understand? Like this is changing the entirety of the psyche of the human being. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. reprogramming the human culture. And he's done it without a, a divine inspiration, but due to some sort of a a thought and in fact uh, he was convinced by the Sahaba about this because he at the beginning it, uh, it says in the narration that was mentioned that he uh, changed this innovative innovation about the calendar is like at the beginning he didn't want it but the Sahaba kept going to him and then they said ah oh, yeah okay fine let's do it mm -hmm. you know so he was convinced by the Sahaba to actually change the entirety of how we keep track of the months which is in its own right one of the complete disasters that has hit us today yeah. One of the things is, is that the names of the months mm -hmm. that we have today in the, in the calendar mm. are quite, quite different. Yeah, no, they are different. And before we move on to uh, the yeah. names of the months, because I mean, that's something that I think is going to shock a lot of yeah. people. Let's actually talk about uh, and actually show uh, the video clip on what Abu Sadiq uh, from MS Peace uh, had written concerning the conversation between Imam Ahmed al-Hassan uh, from MS Peace and a man concerning the lunar month. The abolishment of the lunar calendar. One day someone asked Imam Ahmed al-Hassan, from him is peace. Is it permissible for a believer in your call to go, do pilgrimage under the rule of the family of Saud? Imam Ahmad al-Hassan, from him is peace, replied, Instead of going to do pilgrimage, Hajj, you should go and give the money. You would be spending on Hajj to the poor people that are dying of starvation around the world. I swear by God, that would equate with God, a hundred thousand pilgrimages. So the man said, God commands me to go do Hajj, and the Imam commands me to give charity. Who shall I believe? Imam Ahmad al-Hassan, from him is peace, responded. You asked me, and I have answered, and you are free, my son. I would like to increase you with another piece of information that perhaps you shall find to be strange. This time and this month is not even the month of Hajj. I mean, we are not even in the season of Hajj. And the Kaaba, which you know is not even the one that is called the Holy Sanctuary of God. I know perhaps many people shall call me a disbeliever, but that is not important. What is important is that I deliver the truth to those who are seeking the truth. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, we have it very clear, plain and simple, where our Imam, Imam Ahmed al-Hassan from mm -hmm. his peace, has made it very clear that the lunar calendar is absolutely wrong. It is something that was never used by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. It was not a method of calculating uh, the uh, seasons or the Hajj season or the month of Ramadan or Eid or the month of Muharram or any of these months uh, at all. And the fact of the matter is because, you know, uh, Hajj is, uh, uh, people, they, when they go on Hajj, Hajj happens on a, on a particular month, yeah, correct? Exactly. It happens on a particular month every single year. But if we go by the lunar calendar, you know, like the months, you know, like for example, Dhul Hajj, right? Dhul Hajj, right? This month uh, will not always be on the same month of, for example, December. It yeah. will go to November, October. It exactly. will be. It just keeps moving. Forward. It, it keeps on moving. So mm -hmm. you'll find that the, the month of pilgrimage suddenly uh, lands in winter, summer, spring, and fall. So mm -hmm. it will continuously throughout the years change, and it will change by the season, uh, because we're doing it based on the lunar calendar. Yeah. But the proof that Hajj can never be in fall nor can it be in, uh, in, 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 um, in spring, is the Qur'an itself. What does the Qur'an say? Let's go to the Surah Quraysh. What does it say? It says, uh, in the whole Qur'an it says, For the accustomed security of Quraysh, their accustomed uh, security in the caravan of winter and summer, let them worship in the house of, uh, 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 I mean, sorry, let them worship the Lord of this house who has fed them. 
uh, saving them from hunger and made them safe, saving them from fear. So we see here that it's very clear. Their accustomed security mm-hmm. in the caravan of winter and summer let them worship the Lord of this house. So over here we can see clearly that the Hajj season has to be uh, in the Quran. It has to be either in the winter or in the summer. It cannot be in the fall, nor can it be in the spring. So it's either one of these two seasons. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, God would not have mentioned, let them uh, worship the Lord of this house. Exactly. And I uh, just wanted to mention, because we're talking about the topic of pilgrimage in this verse, you know, there's some people that interpret it, interpret this verse as talk, be talking about trade, right? Yeah. Yes. But how would it make sense when it's talking about trade, when it clearly says to worship, you know, the Lord of the house who has fed them, which is not obviously worship being a key word here. Right. You don't worship in trade. Right, right. Yeah, At exactly. least not in the apparent anyway. Nothing. But um, trade happens when trade happens, right? Yes. When the, if the fruits are available, whatever you're trading, that that commodity is available yes. so it just wouldn't make sense that it talks about trade yeah. uh, so on the topic of Hajj and pilgrimage um, it's clear from this that it talks about two specific time periods summer and winter and we know that obviously there's a Hajj uh, there's a pilgrimage in winter and there's a pilgrimage in summer summer and winter and um, yeah, I mean, nowadays yeah. the, the concept is is gone back to front. People are doing it at different times of the year when they shouldn't be because we know of this time. And um, it just goes to show that the location, which we mentioned yesterday, uh, which I want to bring up the video for, to, talks about the many carbers, um, is completely wrong. And now we know that the dates they're doing it is also completely wrong. So yeah. uh, let's just bring up this video that talks about the carbor and the many different carbers that the Muslims have and what will happen after that. And here's a, a, a little fact for the viewers. Uh, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, when he came, they didn't just have one Kaaba, uh, one cube. They had many cubes all over the region, uh, all over Arabia and, 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 and extending all the way upwards. And every nomadic tribe, every tribe at the time had its own Kaaba whereby they kept in it their own idols. Yes. And so the Bani Umayyah had their Kaaba, and the Bani Hashim had their Kaaba, and all of the tribes had their own Kaaba. The true Kaaba that Abraham built, the Kaaba of the Bani Hashim is not the Kaaba that the people are making pilgrimage to today. The Kaaba that the people are making pilgrimage today to is the Kaaba of the Bani Umayyah. Hmm. My God. And this is the Kaaba that the Qa'im will destroy. And this is the Kaaba that, as it was filled back in the day with idols, in this day and age, you see the walking, talking idols walking around it, going inside of it, walking out of it. The idols of this day and age, those that wear the costume of the Prophet of Allah, those swines and apes that the Prophet saw in his dream jumping on his platform and speaking in his place, speaking on his member. Those whom are the children of the evil tree, the curse tree in the Quran. So yeah, there you have it. You see these uh, apes and swine, these children of the evil tree, um, that have completely destroyed the religion of Islam. They've you know pointed you to a different Kaaba. You're not actually going to make pilgrimage in the right place mm. um, because of the innovation of the likes of Umar. You have uh, people doing uh, Hajj and pilgrimage in different months that they should be doing it. So they're not only going to the wrong place, but they're doing it in the wrong time. I mean, we're here really to bring back the religion because 99 percent of it, as we keep saying, is completely gone uh, astray. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned earlier about uh, how some people use it as a trade. They say mm-hmm. that this, these months uh, of the uh, Quraysh moving in, in, in their caravans mm-hmm. uh, in safety or security, mm-hmm. uh, which is what we know. For example, if you're talking about the uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi when he wanted with the Sahaba after they went into the battles mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and they went to Sulh al-Hudaybiyah, right? And in the, in the uh, the peace treaty of between uh, the Prophet and and the Quraysh in the Hudaybia, uh, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam traveled to Mecca at that time, and uh, they were in safety. 
And so it's talking about the same safety that actually was mentioned in the Quran in this verse, mm -hmm. that yes, you have safety and Quraysh knew at that time that they couldn't attack the Prophet even though they didn't have weapons on them because of the intention of traveling for the sake of what? For the sake of Hajj, for the mm. sake of pilgrimage. Exactly. So that's the safety that the Quran is mentioning about, which is a direct link for the Hajj and pilgrimage, mm -hmm. which means that it's a direct link to the month of winter and summer. It doesn't say a specific, uh, oh, uh, it's in the month of Ramadan. You know, it doesn't say in the in the winter months. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, it doesn't say in the uh, Rabi al Awal, this first spring month yeah, exactly. name. You know, it says winter. Summer, mm -hmm. which is funny. which is a specific month, uh, a part of the year. Yeah, it doesn't seasons. change. It's, it doesn't mm -hmm. change. You know, mm -hmm. winter doesn't come in the in, in, in January. <laughs> yeah. Like it doesn't. It's, sorry, it doesn't come. For example, in the April or March mm -hmm. or like in the mid 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 year. Yeah. It comes and, always in December. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing that people have to understand too concerning trade that you don't do trade according to seasons. Yeah. You do trade according to if there is a business, if there is a need, yeah. if mm -hmm. there is something of the sort. You know, so it can happen any time. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily like oh, hey guys, look at. It's springtime, I gotta go, you mm -hmm. know, I gotta go take this caravan and like uh, head out. Mm -hmm. And also, it, uh, like the Quran, the verse would have mentioned that the caravan was on a trade, but it says, okay, well, when they're uh, uh, yeah. on their journey, when they're in the caravan and they come to you in the spring and the summer, let them worship and let them have safety and let them, but it didn't say let them worship and let them trade and let them have safety and mm -hmm. let them fear God. Yeah. Uh, no, it doesn't say anything like that. So, yeah. you know, that's one thing that we have to point out. So we find over here that actually the Hajj season was in the summer. Yeah. I mean, sorry, the Hajj season was in the uh, winter and the Umrah season was in the summer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking about the seasons, as yeah. you mentioned, right? And I think that you can take the floor for this because it is a fascinating topic. This whole thing that you just mentioned about yeah. Rabi al-Awwal. Yeah. Uh, Rabi al-Awwal means the first spring, spring or the first month of spring. Yeah. So if we have uh, the lunar calendar, where would we be in right now if we were to apply the lunar calendar? Uh, for Rabi al -Awad. That would be a glitch actually in the system and it is a glitch it in really the system of the calendar of the Muslims which is a disaster that nobody really when I asked my, my father my physical father mm -hmm. about this he was like he was laughing because he didn't know how to answer it it's like something it's a glitch when I say how can first spring that how can and you ask yourself this qu same question how can first spring come in winter how does that make sense? It just doesn't make sense. It's logically uh, incoherent. That, there is a glitch there. So which is what is the glitch? Is what we're trying to say over here and we're trying to prove over here for everybody. Which is what? That the calendar in the original form, it was actually a solar calendar placed by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mm -hmm. Alaihi Somehow, as we know, Umar ibn al-Khattab came and changed the solar calendar to a lunar calendar, but they kept the names. They kept the names of the lunar, of the solar calendar, which means what? Now you have first spring, mm -hmm. the, you know, it's the, the first frost, mm -hmm. first frost coming in, in summer. I mean, this is a contradiction. Yeah. The name itself contradicts the reality of the season. These, in fact, these titles and names are titles which, if you go search online for the solar calendar names of the months, mm -hmm. you will find them to be such names. Why? Because they actually point to the season that they're in. Yeah. So a first spring is when the first spring happens of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, so winter is when winter happens in the year. So exactly. It's, you know? mm -hmm. So it's a fixed month because as we said earlier, solar calendar takes what the rotation of the earth around the sun and that's how we get seasons, right? Mm -hmm. You get seasons because the earth rotated uh, about this much and therefore it's a bit further. There, at this time, around this time, it's a bit further from the sun, therefore it's, it's winter and it gets closer and it's, it gets summer and so on and so forth rotating around the earth in its own axis as Allah subhanahu wa mm ta'ala -hmm. says. So the idea is when we were kids in Islam, in Islamic country, countries, I was born in Iraq, Baghdad, so mm -hmm. the idea is that in the schools we used to be taught by the uh, religious teachers that uh, these were for trade reasons mm -hmm. and we didn't think about it really, we, no, I, I didn't think about it, I was like, oh okay, they used to travel in the winter and the summer for the, for the trade reasons, you know, that's all that there is to even though 
Why would you, if you were in the middle of the desert of Saudi Arabia, do do trade travel in the summer in the midst of the heat of yeah. the hottest environment? Like, how does that make sense for you? Oh, it would. I would not take my camel out in the summer of the, uh, you know, of or, or or horse out in the summer of these things. Aslan, the people used to complain about going to battles, and do used to go out when they used to, you know, when it was summer. It was so hot in the mm-hmm. Middle East. You see, we've seen it. You go to Dubai, go to the Middle East. It is hot. Yeah. Imagine having to actually travel and and do physical labor in that much heat. People die from this stuff, you know. Yeah. So it doesn't. It's logically incoherent that the that the Prophet or God Subhanahu wa Taala would command, uh, you know, that uh, or or the people would go do trades in those months because then you have to put all kinds of weights on on your yeah. on your animals. You understand? Like mm-hmm. you're not actually just carrying yourself, you know, with it with your with your shawl, you know, mm-hmm. for Hajj, you know. No, actually, you're taking. Food for the trip, water for the trip, plus mm-hmm. all the trades, the supplies that you bought, yeah. which is how many tons of weights that you have to yeah. that your animals have to carry in, in the winter. It just doesn't logically fit. So in here, the Quranic verse is absolutely clear. There is trips that happened at that time in winter and in summer. Mm-hmm. What is the intention behind those? Uh, those trips, Allah defines the intention very clearly. Mm-hmm. Let them worship. So it is for the intention of worship. The, this is, is you see how clear it is. Trips in summer, winter. The intention for them is to worship the Lord of the house. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's uh, these things are only for worship, not for trade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, no, for sure, not for trade. And you know, not o- only just for trade. And because, oh my God, you're talking about like the intense heat of yeah. like Dubai and like the other um, uh, countries in the Middle East, right? My God, when I was in Egypt, you know, during the summertime, it was scorching hot. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it it makes you think to yourself, you know, in Dubai too, you know, you walk outside just for like three minutes, five minutes, Watch. you're dying yeah. of heat. Your your pores are opening sweating. up. You're sweating already in the first five minutes. You're I soaked. Remember. It's done. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, exactly. It's mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. So then it makes you think to yourself, well, if it's not logical to go out trading in the middle of the hot desert heat in the, in, in, in the middle of summer, you know, yeah. you would not take your camel out to do that. Why would anybody also fast in that kind of month? What kind of loving, peaceful merciful God yeah. allows you to fast in a heavy month like that. I mean, people in Pakistan, I remember that there was one year, people in Pakistan and, and across the Middle East, they were uh, having heat strokes. Mm-hmm. There had to be facilities opening up for these people because while they were working, while they were outside, they were suffering from heat stroke and people were dying because they were fasting in one of the hottest days of the yeah. year at that time. Look at that. <laughs> so, I mean, is it logical that God invents uh, the month of Ramadan and allows that the Muslims tire themselves and kill themselves to fast in uh, in a particular time, in a particular age, in which they are dying from heat exhaust, uh, exhaustion, and they are not able to carry out their normal duties due to the intense heat. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Not at all. And also... You know, maybe people might be thinking to themselves, like, my God, are you saying like that we've been fasting in the wrong month the, the whole time? Well, I'm sorry to say, but yes, yeah. actually, it is the case. You guys have unfortunately been fasting in the wrong month at the wrong time for the past Ouch. thousand years. Mm-hmm. You get lucky sometimes yeah. because it, it, yeah, it, it does, line up. Yeah, it, it does up. line up sometimes. Once in a while, in a once, in a while once in a blue <laughs> mode, literally. Really. <laughs> uh, but... But actually, you know, this is not something that we're making up, by the way. Mm-hmm. This is actually something that the Ahlul Bayt from the Mispeace promised was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Let's pull up the hadith from Bihar al-Anwar that actually talks about this. So we have a hadith from the Prince of the Believers, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib from the Mispeace, who said, when this time comes, when this time comes, the crescents uh, increase in size one time until the crescent of two nights is seen. And they disappear another time until the people break fast at the beginning of Ramadan and they fast at the end of Ramadan. So imagine that actually. Mm-hmm. The Ahlul Bayt are saying that there will come a time for the people where they end up uh, beginning fasting. It says over here what? Until the people break fast at the beginning of Ramadan. So imagine that. Imagine Ramadan is actually starting. The real month of Ramadan is starting. 
but people are breaking their fast which mm-hmm. means which means which, Ramadan just like for the Muslims at that time they they fasted the month that was before Ramadan exactly mm-hmm. so now <laughs> they're actually breaking fast and they're actually having yeah. Eid yeah. when in, in the beginning Ramadan. of Ramadan yeah. Yeah. How, how crazy and, is that? and then it says over here and they fast at the end of Eid yeah. mm-hmm. they fast at the end of Eid that which means, means another another month like they just finished Eid and it just so aligned that Ramadan just started mm-hmm. yeah, how crazy is that you know it's crazy but it's something that they prophesied would happen and it's not just one hadith there's another hadith as well let's go to al-kafi where it says that imam al-jawad from him his peace was asked may i be a ransom what do you say about fasting Mm -hmm. it was said that they are not given success in fasting so now we see a companion who knows about this hadith that knows about what's going on he's like hey what does this mean that like they're not given success to fasting Mm -hmm. So he said, indeed the prayer of the angel, so this is Imam Jawad speaking, he says, indeed the prayer of the angel against them was answered. So I said, and how was that? May I be your ransom? He said, the people when they killed al Hussein, may God's prayers be upon him, God the exalted commanded an angel to call saying, O oppressive nation that has killed the descendants of its messenger, may God not give you success neither to fasting nor to breaking fast. Mm -hmm. So we see here actually that God was so angry was so aggravated with the Muslims who were fasting, who were praying, who were giving zakat, but they had the audacity to kill the true fasting, the true prayer, the true zakat, the true hajj, the true shahada, who also became a shahid at the end because the Muslims killed him, Imam al Hussein from him is peace, that God was like, okay, you guys are so worried about the practical stuff, let me make sure that the practical stuff you can't even do properly. Mm-hmm. Let me make sure that you guys get confused and don't even fast in its proper months. And now what we have, we actually have the Qa'im of the family Muhammad from him is peace bringing yeah. out now the true Islamic calendar. If you guys don't mind, I'll bring it up on yeah, the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay guys, so let's bring up the, on the screen the true calendar. So on the left side, you'll find the Gregorian month from January to uh, December. And on the right side, you will find the true Islamic calendar, the way that it was revealed. So we have, thank God, Rabi al Awal, the first uh, month of spring, actually being in spring in March, Mm -hmm. where the spring equinox takes place. And we have the month of Ramadan taking place all the way at the end in the month of December, because that is how merciful God is, that He does not allow His creation to uh, starve themselves in the midst of the uh, hottest summers, but rather He allows them to fast in the coldest of winters and everybody knows fasting in the month of Ramadan when it lands on December for the mainstream Muslims mm-hmm. is a pretty uh, easy task if yeah. you're if all you're doing is just uh, refraining from eating and drinking yes yeah, winter so it's easier to handle it's easier to digest it's much uh, uh, more doable in the Middle East if you imagine the heat of the summer uh, that doesn't work for you but in the winter you can actually do Ramadan in a nice way you can mm-hmm. actually manage to do it without suffering to death you understand and uh, you won't give the people the uh, the excuse that they can't do it uh, just because it's so hot and they're like so thirsty and they cannot do it really because now it's not hot now it is actually possible for everybody to benefit from the benefits of fasting. There is tons of benefits to fasting, by the way, that Abu Sadiq will reveal for us, inshallah, soon. The idea is that fasting itself is an amazing thing that the prophets and the messengers all did. So just the idea is, if you put the this 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 month of fasting in the middle of the heat, it's going to be a disaster. No, not many people can actually benefit from it. They won't get the benefits because it's too hot. Mm. But, but now everybody can. Exactly. It's December now it's winter. Everybody can unless yeah. you're sick or you have some terminal illness or something something yeah. like that. So and what I like about the calendar too yeah. is uh, it. I mean, it just makes sense. Like we said uh, yeah. earlier, Rabi al Awal and uh, you yeah. know, uh, Rabi the first and Rabi the second or the first spring, second spring is March uh, uh, is March and April. I mean, that makes sense. Jamari al Awal, Jamari al Thani. It's co- it's literally translated to yeah. the hardening, right? Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, it's still kind of practically winter. Yeah. January and February it's going are away, pretty so cool. it's like 
like instead mm -hmm. of snow is snow or something like that, it's still cold enough for it to be that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and there cannot be any growth exactly. uh, until spring comes. Exactly. So it makes sense that Rabi al Awal and Rabi al Thani uh, are existing in, in, in uh, January and February. Yeah. I mean, this it's aligns just... it to the solar way of doing yeah. the, the season, yeah. the way, which is the solar calendar. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this now puts the name, do, this does justice to the names yeah. that you have and you're using every single year, every single month. Mm -hmm. These names that you have before, right? Now, according to Umar ibn al-Khattab's way of doing, it is injustice to the names and it's injustice to you because obviously this is an innovation that he did not receive from God or the Prophet. Yeah. This is something that he innovated and therefore you see the disasters of that. You understand? Mm -hmm. yeah, so no, I was just going to say, like, let's look at it practically, right? Yeah. Um, because as you've mentioned and as you've displayed just then, you know, these events correspond to what's happening on the earth, literally. Yeah. Like you yeah. have the like, first spring, second spring when things are going green again. Yeah. Um, but what do we have? Like if we look at it today, if we look at the calendar today, yeah. uh, we are actually in October, yeah. according to the Gregorian month. And what yeah. do we find? You know, it's in the midst of autumn, it's getting cold, it's getting chilly. There's nothing green about it, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. But if you look at the Islamic calendar, where are we? We're in the second, oh, wow. we're Inshallah. actually in what we would expect we to see the second spring. The second spring, spring. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, lots of greens and I mean, flowers. It's, exactly, just something practical for you to ask yourself right now is that, okay. Us guys, we've explained the definitions of, of the of the names of the of the months in the Islamic calendar, and we've also explained to you how it came about. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. you have to ask yourself: Is this something that? You know, God in all of his wisdom and Prophet Muhammad in all of his wisdom and might would have done yeah. Absolutely not, this is not something that is logical that we would even follow as like fallible human beings So you have to really ask yourself who is leading you and who is appointing you And just another month I want to uh, mention and just to bring up to highlight um, Sort of again, uh, sort of a tragic event And what happens when you're following these corrupt rulers is the month of Muharram yeah. in June mm -hmm. um, We obviously know as, you know, as, as a former Shia um, the tragedy of Karbala. Uh, oh, yes. You see um, the stories of Karbala, and you see the events that took place there. And uh, the you know not to go into too much because I'm sure we'll get into it in the later detail. We've only got a few minutes left. Yeah, this is a disaster. But actually. I mean, it's a, it's a horrific event, and you know they cut off the water supply, and you see Hazrat Abbas going out and collecting water. And one of the main things they speak about in the in Ashura is this is is, a, is a, you know Hazrat Abbas going out to get these these buckets of water because yeah, yeah. the infants and the children of Al Hussein and the family of Muhammad are dying of thirst and this is mm. happening when in June what like pretty much one of the hottest months in yeah. the Saudi Arabia Peninsula can you imagine what they had to go through yeah. and why he went through this and the companions of Al Hussein had to go through during this time and it corresponds with the hadiths that we have from back then that it was obviously uh, Inhumane what they was doing and you can put yourself in that picture now because you now know that it's happened in June What you can imagine is if you're if you're if you're watching this or you've ever been to uh, you know the Arabian Peninsula in June how hot and uh, Just dire it is yeah, and yeah. the idea is this is that even now that you mentioned it It's really something to pinpoint as well is that now the Shias mm -hmm. they mourn in Muharram, yeah. even though Muharram keep, keeps moving. Exactly. So they're not actually mourning on the same, same time that exactly. the death happened of, uh, of Al Hussein alayhi salatu sure and not. the martyrdom exactly. of Al Hussein and his companions. The idea is that how disastrous is that? Imagine that Al Hussein alayhi salatu uh, was martyred in, 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 in a hot day mm -hmm. and you're in winter uh, mourning for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. 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 How does that doesn't make, make sense. It just doesn't make sense. Then you don't know which day of the year he actually died. Exactly. And it makes sense because, I mean, like uh, the historical. Historical accounts talk about how hot and how devastating the heat was uh, when Imam al-Hussein's caravan reached there to the point that Ruqayya, the daughter yeah. of, mm -hmm. of Imam al-Hussein, was asking Abbas for water. Yeah, yeah. Abbas tried to do it, but because of the Muslims at that time who were too concentrated on, on listening to the scholars, hey, pray, hey, fast, give zakat, uh, do hajj, uh, say the shahada, and then go and kill Imam al-Hussein, you know, God like completely destroyed these guys, and these guys, because they loved the rituals so much, God gave them the, uh, the rituals, but in a very very, very corrupted form mm -hmm. and yet yeah, we see that everyone's been affected and we've seen that Islam has been so disgraced you know since the time of the Prophet's death to the point that not only have the people not been able to uh, fast correctly yeah. in its proper times but actually the fasting that the people do generally mm -hmm. is not the fasting of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fasting that the people do now is completely opposite, actually, 
of what uh, the month of fasting was intended for. Yeah. And that is something, inshallah, that we will be going over on the very next episode because we have to really dedicate a whole episode to yeah. the true month of Ramadan and the month of Ramadan that the people are uh, pursuing in this time and comparing it. Which one is better? Which one makes more sense? I guess it's time to find out on the next episode. Thank you all for watching. And I think that uh, next episode is going to be a fun one. Yes. <laughs> anyway, guys, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.